Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, Arm have just announced a new CPU core design that we're gonna see in smartphones probably at the end of this year and certainly into next year. Now, the CPU is called the Cortex-A77 and today I want to tell you all about it. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So back in April, I made a video predicting what we're gonna see in terms of CPUs and GPUs over the next few months. And in that video, I said that it was likely that ARM would release a new CPU design because that's what they do uh, every year, uh, kind of in the early summer, late spring. And that's exactly what they've done again this year. And I took a stab at a guess of the name and I said it would be the Cortex A77 because last year's device was called the Cortex A76. And I was right, it is the Cortex A77. So today I want to do two things. First of all, I want to look at what is the Cortex A77 and what does it provide in terms of functionality and performance and power efficiency. And then in the second half of the video, I want to take a bit of a deeper dive into the micro architecture of the Cortex A77 to see how it's put together. Now, if you wanna bail out after the first half, that's absolutely fine. And I'll tell you when I'm gonna get more technical. But in either case, let's get started. So the Cortex A77 is a second generation of CPU built on the foundation of the Cortex A76. However, it has been tweaked and changed to increase its uh, single core performance. The proper way to say that maybe would be the instructions per cycle in performance has gone up by 20%. And obviously that is a significant increase and that makes it good for not only uh, smartphones, but also for laptops, particularly let's say laptops running Windows on ARM. So the Cortex A77 can be used in a very similar way to the Cortex A76, almost a drop-in replacement in many ways. It works with dynamic. It, of course, is ARM uh, 8.2 architecture, 32-bit and 64-bit, and supports various levels of caching, as you can see here on the slide. Because it works with dynamic, it means it's a big, dot little capable uh, CPU, and it will be paired with the Cortex A55, just like the Cortex A76 before it. Now, if we look here at the performance uplift, here are some important things to notice. If you're taking the basis of the Cortex A75 on 10 nanometer at 2.8 gigahertz, that's 2017 that was released, then the Cortex A76 provided a 35% increase in performance, so quite a big jump there, but that was also a jump from 10 nanometers down to seven nanometers, and the baseline for testing this uh, benchmarking went from 2.8 gigahertz to three gigahertz. But when you come over to the Cortex A77, this is still on seven nanometer and still on three gigahertz, and yet there is a 20% increase in the performance. So these are purely micro architecture changes that are giving us this leap in performance because everything else remains the same, seven nanometer process node, and this is measuring it running at um, a three gigahertz. Okay, so the big takeaway there is that 20% jump in performance on the same process node running at the same clock speed. So that means if you took a Cortex A76 based process like today, like for example, the Snapdragon 855, and you put the Cortex A77 in there, then you're gonna get that 20% uh, increase in performance without doing anything else. Now, when we look forward to what's coming uh, during the next year and into next year, of course, we're expecting Qualcomm to announce probably in December, the new Snapdragon, maybe it'll be called the Snapdragon uh, 865, and it would be based on the Cortex A77, but of course it can be tweaked by Qualcomm because they have that built-on Cortex technology license, which means that actually it may even be tweaked for even greater performance, and of course it will be called a cryo CPU at that point. And of course, other OEMs are also able to use the Cortex A77 in their chip designs. So ignoring all uh, political turmoil that might be around at the time that I'm actually recording this video, uh, traditionally, Huawei would have released a new chip uh, later in the year uh, in their Kirin range based on the Cortex A77. And then of course there are other manufacturers, including Samsung, including MediaTek, but I don't expect to see the Cortex A77 actually featuring in their processors in the short term at least. Okay, so that's it for the kind of the overall view of things. I'm now gonna do a bit of a deeper dive into the micro architecture. So if you wanna bail out now, that's absolutely fine. But just as you're going, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and maybe hit that bell as you go. Okay, we'll wait for you to go. Okay, see you. 
Okay, so now they're gone, let's dive into the microarchitecture to find out a bit more. So the key thing you can see here is that the Cortex A77 had a design goal to increase the uh, instructions per clock performance greater than that of the Cortex A76 while maintaining the same frequency capabilities as the Cortex A76. And to do that, several big things had to change. First of all, the uh, pipeline has now become a six wide instruction wide pipeline rather than four wide which is what we had in the Cortex A76. There is double the branch prediction bandwidth that the branch predictor has been improved so that it is more accurate and there has been an increase in the branch target buffer capacity. And also there is a brand new component that's been introduced into the front end of that pipeline and that is the macro op cache, the mop cache. And basically when uh, an instruction goes from that very first part of that pipeline and it now gets broken down in that very first decoding phase, there is now a cache based on the memory address that it won't have to perform that same decode if it's already been through that pipeline recently and it's in the cache. And that means you can save a whole cycle down the pipeline and actually speed up the, the, the trip of that instruction down the pipeline, which of course improves performance. And it has an 85% hit rate across diverse workloads, even with only just being 1.5K, because 1.5K per core. And then when we get to the decode rename commit part of the pipeline, there's been a 50% increase in the dispatch width, up from four instructions a cycle to now six instructions a cycle. And there's been a 25% increase in the size of the out of order window. So now it can actually look up to 160 instructions ahead to find out how it can reorder those instructions to make the path uh, more efficient through the pipeline. And when you get to the back end of the pipe, the actual execution core, now there has been an extra ALU added, and that ALU is capable of doing uh, simple one cycle uh, types of instructions, but it's also able to do the more complex types of uh, two cycle instructions. There's now a second branch uh, execution unit, which means that when you've got those 160 instructions all queuing up out in the out of order queue, it made sense to add in a second branch uh, execution part so that the pipe could keep on flowing. And interestingly, there's also a second AES encryption pipe, which just shows you the importance of uh, encryption in hardware in today's workloads. And as I've said many, many times in different videos, caching is a fundamental part of the improvements that can help the performance of a micro architecture. And as you can see, there have been some big changes to the way that the L1 and L2 caching are handled in the Cortex A77, making them even better than the quite superb uh, already prefetching and caching that we had in the Cortex A76. So if we look at the different workloads here, various spec benchmarks, 2006 and 2017, a geek bench, for example, then we're looking at anything from kind of 20%, 25%, uh, and it's kind of uh, between 15 and 20 percent increases across the board, depending, of course, on the particular workload. And this is all to do with those micro architecture changes that have made the processor higher performing. And quickly, what's interesting here, if you look at the floating point benchmarks there for 2006 and 2017, you'll see a significant increase. And yet there's not actually been any increase in the raw floating point uh, power of the Cortex A77. These are just because the instructions and the caching and the way that microarchitecture is made means that those instructions get through the uh, whole process much, much quicker, even though the actual execution unit for the floating point hasn't changed. That sh really shows, proves the improvements they've had to that pipeline in the Cortex A77. And so there you have it, some interesting changes there from it being a four wide instruction pipe to a six wide, and then the increase at the back end of that pipe there for the execution units to cope with the fact that we're now into a six wide pipe. And then some changes there at the beginning of the pipe with that uh, instruction cache that helps the decode cycle and can actually shave off one cycle as an instruction passes its way down the pipeline. Now, as I said earlier, we're gonna see this uh, CPU design in smartphones maybe at the end of this year, certainly into 2020, and we're gonna see a 20% increase across the board. However, this is just for CPU advantages. Now, actually, ARM also announced a brand new GPU, 
and my next video is going to be discussing the new uh, GPU from ARM. Okay, my name is Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains, I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do give it a thumbs up, do subscribe, it really does help if you hit that bell notification icon and well uh, that's it, I'll see you in the next one.